tell me a little bit about who you are and where you are tuning in from. I think you're in Canada, right? Yes, I am. Um, my name is Jones. Um, I immigrated to Canada in 2005. Um, you know, and I'm a physical therapist. I have my own practice as a physical therapist. I have my first degree uh, from Nigeria. Then I did my uh, doctor of physical therapy uh, program uh, at the University of Montana in the United States. So, but over the course of uh, several years now, I've had this burden, you know, on my heart regarding the uh, the trajectory in which the family is trending, you know, the traditional, biblical, Christ-centered family, and that burden became so much that, you know, the uh, I felt the call to do something about it, and that is when this idea to set up. Uh, an organization named Defense for the Family uh, came about. Actually, the name was finalized uh, towards the end of uh, uh, last year, and uh, we set up our website. I've been doing some webinars, and uh, actually our first conference will be next month here in Calgary, uh, in Alberta. All right, so you're in Calgary, Alberta? Yes. That, what an incredible story coming from Nigeria. Mm -hmm working yes. in physical therapy okay yes. so jones this is what i'll do as we get started i'm reading a little bit of what you do on your website defenseforthefamily.com yes. and i'm like wow some of the topics that you talk about are are out there you know and i'm gonna offer an emoji reaction just to some of the content that i see on your website so that people can sure. be can be Maybe agreeing or disagreeing with their own emoji. So are you ready? I am. Let's go for it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're going to go to the emoji tombola. And the emoji tombola is going to reveal the emoji. Okay, it's going on. And it's the blasphemous emoji. Shocking. Shocking. Jones, how do you yes. feel about getting the coveted? Not everybody gets the blasphemous emoji. First of all, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, the I, I, I would say to, to a point that uh, when you look at the way the family is right now, the situation, I mean, the, uh, the states of the traditional Christian family, you know, I, I would say is it, we are getting to that borderline uh, blasphemers. You know, it's uh, you know there 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 has been a lot of issue going on, you know, uh, with with the with the modern family, so to say, that is overtaking the uh, uh, the, the traditional family. But when we look at all this modern family, the different kind of arrangement that we are having today, I would put them side by side with the scriptures actually uh we would say it's blasphemous in a way that you know we are in a way destroyed what creates our civilization and this is something that god himself made he set up family but now when we are doing contrary to the will and the plan of god regarding family i think that's blasphemous so i <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> all right so we're on the same page <laughs> yes <laughs> okay <laughs> All right, Jones. So, I mean, there's a lot already where I want to go with this podcast. But I guess I want to start right here, like from your own vantage point. I mean, you come from Nigeria, you know, so that's, yes. that's already awesome when I get to talk to people like all around the world. Yes. But especially Africa, you know, you were even saying that, um, you know, back to one of my first episodes, I was talking to a person in Kenya as well as a person in Canada, and it seems yes. like, you know, you're connected to them. So yes. go look for that episode. It was a fun episode yes. with my friends from Bethany Kids. Yes. So, I mean, to start, um, this is great. You know, I love talking to people all over the world, but it just catches me as super interesting, the fact that you're stayed in Canada, you know, you're in, in, in Calgary. Yes. And then when I look at the world from my little cubicle here in california uh i tend to see canada as like super forward thinking even some people might call it progressive and there's a lot yes. of interpretations for what progressive can mean 
yeah. some of my friends even said, man, Canada is like, it's it's communist, right? Like things like, they're, they're already like saying names like that. Uh, yes. You know, we have the, the, a few months ago or a month ago, the trucker thing that was going on in Canada. So, I mean, just from your vantage point, I, I would love for you to expand a little bit of on what is your vision of the family? Like, what do you think is the family? And, and for sure, you're using like biblical terms, as, as you said at the beginning. So I just want to know, like, from your vantage point, point, what is family? And then we'll move on to what are you experiencing in Canada yes. that you're saying, OK, that that is a stretch to call mm -hmm. family. So what is yes. family? Jones. Yeah, uh, you you know the uh, if we look at the scriptures, look at the in the beginning when when God made everything. Those of us that believe in uh, in classical understanding of the scriptures, you know, Adam and Eve, they were not just uh, a phantom. Uh, um, uh, uh, how do I put it now? That something that. People call it myth. They say, oh, they never, they were never in existence, that we just made them up. But that's not the case. Those of us that are Christian, we believe that God made this man, he made a woman, okay? And eventually, you know, children came in between both of them, okay? So the the essence of, uh, of family as an institution, okay, is that basic unit of the society in which a man and a woman come together, okay, in holy matrimony, and they are joined together, and they procreate, so that form that family, which we often call nuclear family, okay? And the essence of that family, I mean, that unit is to glorify God and to be uh, an avenue whereby we raise God-fearing children, people that we move the agenda of God forward. Okay, that is a unit in which uh, values are created, in which love are taught, you know, and in which world views are formed. So, but now uh, uh, in, in, in Christian uh, uh, understanding, we believe that, you know, family should be a unit that comprises of a man and a woman. But if you look at our world today, you see that we've had we're, we're having all kind of arrangement, you know, two men together coming together, you know, in, in the name of gay marriage or lesbian marriage or whatever it is. But we know that this arrangement they lead us as a society to a dead end. You know, it's you know, it's uh, it's not the perfect will of God. It's not the will of God at all. Okay, so that is my own view of what family should be. It ought to be Christ-centered. Okay. In fact, Christ made some reference to he said, Don't you know that in the beginning, you know, God made them male and female. Okay. And these male and female, they come together for a purpose. And that is God's divine purpose, you know, to protect the family, to protect the society, you know, and to protect an individual that made up that unit. So, but unfortunately, our world are deviated totally from the plan and the purpose of God. And my goal, okay, is to fight. It's a good fight of faith to see that we bring this God-centered, traditional, biblical-centered family back to life again. Okay. So, uh, wow. Yeah, I, I get it. I guess as a Christian, it's almost like easy for me to understand. Yeah, family makes sense. A man and a woman um, makes sense. And if I would be a little bit like playing devil's advocate or even skeptical of, <laughs> uh, you know, of the Bible, which yes. is uh, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Right. But uh, yeah, Let's... it would be it would be on the lines of like, uh, I mean, when I look at the West, it's like the the supreme value of the West has been freedom. Right. Yes. And I guess it has become like the freedom to anything, like the freedom yes. to choose, the freedom to say, I want to love whomever I want to love. I want to be yes. with whomever I want to be. Right. Um, so what are you experiencing right now in Canada? Is it really that progressive? Or, you know, when when maybe I don't know if you are familiar with statistics about family in Canada that you can inform us a little bit, like what's happening in Canada that's maybe unique 
um, or is Canada just going on like this, the rest of the world? What, what do you see in Canada in terms of family? Well, is, um, you, you know that uh, uh, the Canadian society, it's one of the most uh, progressive uh, um, society you could ever find. Even the, 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 I mean, Canada as, in, as a country, you know, is ahead of so many other Western nations in when it comes to this social issue. Okay. In fact, the so called uh, conservative politicians, you could hardly differentiate them, okay, uh, from the, uh, the, the, the liberals or from the progressives. So, you know, when an election cycle comes around, you know, a typical conservative will be talking to you about tax break and, you know, I will reduce your taxes. And, but if I say, okay, you know, my life is not just about taxes. What about these social issues? Mm. And if you see the way that we react to those questions, they see it as an abomination. They don't even want to touch it. They don't want to talk about, you know, and I would say, okay, if you say you're a conservative, what are you conserving when you cannot conserve life, you cannot conserve family, you cannot conserve, you know, all these traditional values that make us who we are as uh, as a nation. So, you know, the, the, the state of the nation when it comes to the family is in no way different from what we have in all these Western nations. We talk about Europe, we talk about uh, United States of America, but I would say Canada is even a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit ahead when it comes to all these uh, social issues that you know they are, we're just going towards this uh, 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 progressive slippery slope. Okay, when it comes to homosexuality, when it comes to gay marriage, when it comes to transgenderism. You know, you even see that here in Canada, there was a case uh, I heard about a year or two years ago of a man. You know, the uh, the, the child came to dad and said, or came to the parent and said, "Oh, um, though I'm, I'm I hope I get it right. I'm I'm a boy, but I want to be called a girl as from now." You know, the family was broken then because the the father disagreed, the mom affirmed the child, and the court sided with the child and with the mom. So in fact, the mom was thrown in, into jail at one point, you know, so you, you, you will see that as a society, we are on this downward slippery slope to, you know, uh, to, to a point that we will, you know, the society will self-destruct on its own. Okay. <laughs> wow. So what basically what you're saying is if a parent maybe comes, uh, no, tells their kid you are, uh, you know, if the kid is a biological male, but mm -hmm. the kid feels like he should be a woman and the parent mm -hmm. affirms the kid as a biological man, mm -hmm. you, you are you saying that people are being put in jail for that? Yes, it has, it has happened, it has happened at least from the, from one case that I, uh, I, I followed about a year ago or so. Yeah, it's happening. Wow. Okay, so that, I mean, here in America, right, like a, a few days ago, you know, there's this athlete who claims to be, I guess, uh, I get a little confused when, <laughs> you know, it's like male, female, and all of that. Uh, <laughs> yes. I think it's a male who is a trans woman who feels, yes. who feels like he should be a woman, and he's competing yes. in the swim sports and he's yes. winning right like he's winning championships against biological women i mean so yes. all of that to me it, it's it's totally confusing in my head like okay like what who's competing with who and why are they winning and, and so i can only imagine uh i mean for for example right when it comes to free speech there's twitter accounts so there was this this is just like super recent like yesterday or like two days ago there was this um, news publisher. Now they they do satirical. Yes, stuff. Is it Babylon B. The Babylon B, right? So yeah, yes. they're talking about whatever <laughs> on their Twitter, and then Twitter cancels their account. Yes, and says you can no longer post until you remove this post, right? Yes. So now it's moving into territory of like, wow, who's controlling really free speech? Yes. Is it yes. government? Is it the elites? Is it is it uh? Twitter and Google and like these cyber giants. So 
are you experiencing any of that in Canada when when it comes to I mean can you freely speak about this are you afraid at all to say when, hey I'm not talking about transgenderism and <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, w w this is where we are right now. We are under this heavy, I mean, this trifecta of tyranny, you know, that comprises of uh, big tech, big government, you know, and big media. And all these three uh, 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 big establishments, they are actually working in tandem to destroy our freedom, to destroy uh, what we will call speech, I mean, free speech. Okay, now, in as much as you're not saying anything that is against their own set of belief uh, system, you are okay to say whatever you want to say. But if you go, be, if you cross that red line and you begin to say what is truly in your heart, what, you know, your own belief systems are, then you are in the cross here. You know, uh, take for example, uh, the, the, there were a few pastors Okay, they were they, they were jailed during this COVID-19. Why? Because they will not, you know, dance to the uh, official narrative. They will not accept those official narrative that government is giving us. And because they crossed that line, they, they threw them in jail, you know. So Canada, as I said, is in no way different. Okay, from any Western society that we, I mean, that, that we have right now. So, yeah, we're not as free as people we make us to believe. And as I said, you are free to say whatever you want to say, in as much as you are not crossing the line that uh, um, uh, gay activists they've said or the transgender court activists they've said. If you don't, if you're not crossing that, those lines, then you are okay to say whatever you want to say. But the moment you said, you know, this is what I believe, and you want to cross that line, then you automatically cast as uh, a phobic or tra transphobic or homophobic, and they will do everything to cancel you outrightly. Wow. Okay. So how do you, how do you do it? Like, how do you have, uh, You know, defense for the family that come. Are you guys like a nonprofit? Well, that's a that's a good question. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm so glad that you asked that question. You know, we are still in the process. In fact, I've been asking questions because I know that you know this is we we need to anticipate. We need to be proactive. We are supposed to register as a not for profit, and you know the process of going about that. You know, we're still in that process at this uh, at this point. But but for me, one of the issues that I believe uh, the, 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 that is uh, that get us to where we are right now is that there are a lot of these issues that the churches are not even mentioning them. Why? Because because they are under these uh, uh, non-profit status, and they believe that if I say this, if I say that, you know, even though these are biblical issues that need to needed to be tackled head on. So because of that. People are watering down what they should be saying. They are watering down their messages, you know. And just because they are under that status, I know that it's not all the churches, but significant portion of that. You can hardly see, you know, very few pastors will come up and say, this is what the Bible says about this issue. And some of them will be telling you that they are evolving in their own thinking. You know, some churches are even, you know, uh, giving priesthood to gay and lesbians, you know. So, and all because they are under this status. So, Now, am I going to get to a point that they will say, oh, defense for the family, or oh, you cannot register because of your value system, because of what you believe? Yeah, we're, we're, we're willing to, to, for, to forgo that aspect. So, though we're still in the process of registering as a not-for-profit, not but we're already counting the cost, and we will do the will of God, whatever comes. Wow. Okay, so you're going for it. So let's talk about some of the... Uh, the things that you talk about on your on your website, so for example, how the renewed sexual and gender revolutions are wreaking havoc on the foundation of traditional, natural, and family institution. So what would you say, I mean, again, from your vantage point, you already talked about, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, transgender, gay and lesbian couples, you know, raising kids and all of that. So... Uh, If you would say, what are the renewed sexual and gender revolutions? What do you put under that umbrella? Yes. You know, uh, if, if we're all students of history, if you look at, in the, uh, let's say, in the, in the Uh, in the 50s and early 60s, we have this uh, uh, feminist movement, 
you know, um, radical one for that matter. We're not talking about, you know, the uh, women being accorded, you know, the, 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 the true place where God put them, you know, they are made in the image of God, just like any other man. In fact, the Bible says that there is neither Jew nor Greek, no male or female. We hold the same value in the presence of God. But, you know, if you look at the radical femini uh, feminism that swept the society in, in the past several decades, the goal, okay, is not to, uh, uh, to, to fight for the role and the right of women. That is not the uh, the, the the primary role from where we can see i mean from what we can see now it is a carefully designed movement to destroy what we know as traditional family okay and ever since then we see that our modern law school curricula academic theory such as critical race theory economic policy all of these things even reactionary organizations such as BLM, Black Lives Matters, and Antifa, all of these groups and ideologies, they are all working together for one purpose, to deconstruct the family and to destroy it, and eventually to destroy the society the, as the way we know it. So, but recently we've seen the resurgence of that when it comes to, uh, uh, to, 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 to sexual identity and gender identity and all of these things, you know, they, they, are, they are spreading like a wildfire, okay? And in fact, it will take a discernment to know that this is not just ordinary. These are carefully crafted and planned and well-funded uh, 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 plans to destroy anything that God has interest in. And if, there, if there's one place where God, God's interest is, where Christ's interest is, it's in the family. It is in the nuclear family. And they are doing everything, okay, to destroy it. And you and I, we can't just sit on the fence and think that, oh, well, it will pass. It's not going to pass, okay? Are we going to save the whole world? No, that's not our intention. But if we could touch one heart or one mind, you know, to bring about God's purpose and plan for the family and eventually for the society. I think that's a worthy goal to, 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 to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I get that. You know, I see, uh, I think the harder part for me is what is God's purpose for society and, or, or his plan for the family and yes. why are people moving away from that? You were talking about like the feminist movement starting in the fifties, uh, yes. last century, So the impression I have is that maybe as humans, I feel like we're almost like giving up on each other, right? Like women can are not trusting men anymore, and therefore they go to the extreme and they say, I just don't want to relate to men. They're evil. They're bad, right? And when I think of uh, even like transgender uh, people or transgenderism sometimes i feel like wow it seems like people are dissatisfied with their own bodies so much mm -hmm. so that they want to become somebody else even if their biology is informing them of <laughs> no of a reality right and and if you get to the psychological uh, um, the psychology of it it's like wow the, it's almost like psychology doesn't even matter anymore or whatever you construct in your head That's what is right, you know, and we could talk about maybe postmodernism and, and you know what all that means. So I guess my bigger question is, how do you invite people in that realm to say, this is what God's plan is for you? Yes. Right? How would you, yes. like, are you doing that through this? Like, how do you invite the people that are already, like, even activists that are... Yes you know, in the transgender movement or Black Lives Matter, like all these movements, yes. how do you invite them to see a different reality? Yeah, well, uh, th thank you for that, for that question. You see, whatever we do, you know, we do it from uh, the, the, the perspective of uh, Christ's ministry, okay, what he had come to do, okay? As a, as a society, we are moving away, you know, gradually, And at a rapid rate now, as a society, society as a whole is moving away from anything that has to do with God. But the solution still lies in the gospel, okay? You see, 
whoever we have or whatever we choose, God gave us that ability to choose. You remember even in the Garden of Eden when he, he, you know, he, he spoke to Adam, he said, you may do all of this, but there's one thing you shouldn't do. This is it, okay? He, he gave him that option, okay, to choose life. But eventually, the Adam and Eve, they were deceived. The same thing, deception is going on in our world today. In fact, and the deception is so strong to the point that it's not just, you know, confined to the secular society, it has even infiltrated the church, you know, as an institution. Okay. Now, the solution still lies in the gospel of Christ, that we ought to go out as believers, you know, in our daily life. We're not just reading our Bible, but we're living it out. Okay, and we're not quiet about it. We're preaching about it. We're talking to other people about the judgment to come. Okay, so but whatever we do, we do it in love. So we 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 will reach out. There will be an encounter. You know, I remember, you know, uh, for our conferences, a uh, conference that is coming up in April. I decided to do a little promotion on Facebook to promote it, and I I began to get all these responses that were so nasty. You know, people. You know, calling me names, you know, calling whoever organized that is organizing this program, homophobia and all of, you know, and I just felt that, you know, God, you know, this is not my fight, fight, you know, it is the Lord's battle. It's just using us as an instrument. So, but you and I, we need to be faithful to God's calling in our life. We will reach out in love. Okay. We will speak the truth in love and we will not compromise the scripture. It is in that light that people can actually see the light of the gospel and see that, you know what, I may be heading the wrong direction. Let me listen. And it is a spirit of God that brings conviction. Our own is just to speak. Our own is just to pray. But the spirit of God brings conviction. And that's our goal. In all our engagement, in all our interactions with people, that is what we are hoping to achieve. Okay. Well, good luck with that. You know, and I, I say it like I, I I'm not <laughs> saying it like as a joke. No, like good yes. luck with that. And so, how do I identify where and how transgender activism may be reaching somebody's child? Like, how do yeah. you how do you speak to families on this on this issue? Like, how do you tell them? Yeah, just like how do I identify it in yes. the day to day life? Yes, first of all. You know, as I as I mentioned earlier on, uh, our schools nowadays, I mean, the public school, the public education, it's like it's a grooming grant now, okay? And many parents are not aware of it, okay? They are not aware of it that, you know, instead of our children being taught math, science, and language, whatever they were supposed to be learning, okay, the teachers now, they've become activists okay to change the children so we're teaching them one thing at home and for the children that goes to church the pastors they are trying their best to teach them the bible when they go to church but when they go to school okay the the plan of some of these teachers or the school curriculum by design is to change the hearts and mind of children And that is one thing that parents need to be aware of that. What are they even teaching my kids at school? Okay. What books are they recommending for, 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 my, for my child? I don't know how many Christians are asking those questions. Then another thing is the, the social media and the use of technology. Okay. There are a lot of these children, you know, because the parents are not at home, the father and the mom, they are not at home. They just bury their head using, you know, their computers and laptop or whatever it is. And before you know it, they are just doing normal thing, normal subject on the on the on the internet. But before you know it, you know, the the the, the, the there is pop up here and pop up there, and the child just go like that. You know, we've had testimony of so many parents like that that you know this is how my child was indoctrinated and to the point that they wanted to be changing their sex, you know, at what age, you know. So those are the things that parent needs to be aware of. Okay, we need to be aware of our children. What is their own emotional state? What is their own, you know, uh, 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 psychological state? Do are we there for them? I would listen to these children what they are passing through. 
Okay, so those are the things that we need to look at. There are other things that you know we should be aware of, but those are the basic things that parents can actually do to be sure that all these transgender activists they are not reaching their children. Okay, so what is when you talk about the the school system really and the the curriculum within the school, yes. uh, utilizing like specific books and you even you know talked about critical race theory um, yes. a little bit ago. So, what do you mean by indoctrination? Like indoctrination, like that. I mean that to me is just like it, a doctrine is a teaching, right? Yes. So when you talk about like transgender indoctrination, what does that look like? Like, I mean, what kind of books are kids reading? Is it a book that <laughs> has a, a guy that feels like he's a woman? Like, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on what indoctrination means? Yes, yes. You see, uh, it, there, there are some, uh, there, there are a lot of processes that this thing goes through. Uh, you know, the, the people that sit on the board, they, they sit down and they decide, okay, these are the books that the children will be reading for this class and for that class. Okay. But buried in those books are sexually explicit uh, 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 lessons. Okay. A child of four years old or five years old. Okay. And they'll be asking this child, it's, let's say it's a boy. So do you like to play with a doll? So yes, I like to play with a doll. So well, because you like to play with a doll, probably you're actually a girl inside. And from there on, they skew the mind of that little child. And they will be doing everything within that classroom setting to change things. It doesn't matter what parents are doing at home, okay? Now, that's one thing. Then there is this, what they call Gay Street Alliance right now, that if a child says, oh, I'm, I'm gay or I'm this, just go and set up that club. But don't, by law, you shouldn't let the parent know at home. That is an abomination. It shouldn't be. Parents should be aware of what is going on with their children. Okay? So, and this is a process. And these are some of the things that is going on right now that people are not even aware of. Ordinary parents, because they are from morning to evening, they are from, they go to one work, I mean, they go to one job, they go to two jobs and all of this. So they don't even have time to understand that all of these things are, are, go, are going on. Okay? So, And, and and that's one uh, that, that, that's one of the the tools the one of the methods that that they used okay mm. so teachers are enforcing instead of teaching our kids they are the one enforcing some of these things you know there was uh, there, there was uh, one youtube uh, video that i watched in the united states a parent goes to to uh, to school board meeting and he went with with uh, Uh, the books, the, one of the books recommended for 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 a child. Do you know that they have to? The woman, the woman was reading from out of that book. It got to a point that they have to call the microphone so that nobody will hear this woman because these are borderline pornography, in mm. embedded in the curriculum of young kids. That shouldn't be. Mm. And we need to speak out loud about all of these things that are going on. Hopefully, we can make a change. For Christ. Okay, so here's a story, Jones, that I don't know, it might be helpful for people, but when I was growing up, I grew up in Mexico. Yeah. So not too far from here. We're in California. California used to be Mexico, by the way, <laughs> long ago. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I grew up in Mexico and I mean, I'm just going to be completely honest, everyone, okay? I used to play with like dolls. My yes. sister used to do ponytails on my hair. I remember I love playing with my my cousin, you know, my cousin's little doll with with the dress and whatnot. And one time, I mean, this is this is like next level, right? But one time I told my mom, "Hey, I want to wear like these ties." You yes. know, like like almost like skinny jeans or what what are yes. they called? Uh, uh well, ties, right? Like ties on on my on my legs. And she let me go to school with those, right? So for all, I mean, all I'm trying to say is under those circumstances on today's day and age, somebody could have like poured into me and said, man, you should have been a woman, right? Like yes. you like playing with toys that are for girls and like all this yes. stuff. So what you're saying is basically that now if people witness that within the school and yes. within the curriculum, they would 
they would take that as grounds to say, oh, okay, Beto should be a woman. Is that exactly. kind of like what's happening now? Exactly. That is what is happening right now. And they will do everything in their power. If there is no intervention, external intervention, either from the parent or from a caring adult, they, they will do their level best. Okay, to see that they begin to pump you with uh, 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 sex change hormones. Mm. Okay, after after that they begin to do reassignment surgery. You know, these are borderline child abuse. Okay, mm. but we've normalized through our legal system. We've normalized all forms of abnormality, and mm. that shouldn't be the case. You know, now we now have an issue that there are some children because there was no counseling. You know, and they and they. You know, they, they force them one way or another. They, you know, they, they, they push them into doing all of these things, like taking hormones and changing, I mean, the reassignment uh, surgery. Now, they, they wanted to go back to where they, they used to be. They call it to detransition, okay? But it's like we're not even hearing those voices anymore. They don't want people to hear that, oh, there are people who regretted those actions that they were taking, I mean, that were taken uh, for them or on them, right? So it's like a one-way ticket that the devil is giving people to have. One-way ticket, you get in, you can't get out, okay? So what do we need to do? Should we just fold our hands and say, you know what, where well, it will pass? No, it's not going to pass. You know, the Bible said that in the last day, okay, perilous time shall come. You know, and when that perilous time right now that, you know, things are getting worse and worse and worse and we're just moving down the drain and children and families are the major victims of all these progressive ideologies, these pernicious progressive ideologies, and we need to stand against it with love of, with the love of Christ and with the commitment to doing and to speaking the truth in love. Wow. Okay, so speaking, I love that phrase, speaking the truth in love, because I feel like even in one of my other episodes, we were talking about common Bible misconceptions with uh, the host of a show called The Bible Never Said That. And we were we were talking about like half-truths, right? And I was even considering the idea that, you know, when the Bible says speaking the truth in love, I was saying, why does, I, I think... I don't, I don't remember. Maybe you know. Is it the Apostle Paul or is it one of the other disciples that said that? Is it John? Do you remember? I it, or James? I, I would. Oh, well, I, sorry, I, I don't have it in my head right now. Me neither. Okay. So let's just, I mean, it's in the Bible, in the New Testament. Yes. You guys put it in the comments, you Bible scholars. I'm just a communications guy. But um, I love the fact that he says, speak the truth in love. Because why did he add the phrase in love? I feel like to me, particularly, it almost seems like if he just says, speak the truth, maybe maybe it is the truth, but maybe it's not fully, right? So maybe it's also a half truth, which therefore could be almost like a lie. But if you speak the truth in love, I feel like that's the complete picture of truth yes. when it's told in love. So, I mean, what are... Okay, let's, before we move on to a little more, like, hopeful, like, what are you doing right now? Let's, there's just one more thing on, um, when you talk about transgenderism, like, you talk ab about it almost like as a cult. Can you speak to that? I mean, from your vantage point, do you see, like, what is the, when, when I think of a cult, I'm like, wow, there, there's like a, almost like a spiritual element maybe even you could even say if we're you no know, if you're christian like a demonic element to it so what do you mean when you say that something is a cult yeah when, when you look at the, the 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 true nature of uh, cultism they have this uh, a, a kind of uh, loyalty you know that you cannot say anything against you know the the that particular group okay and if you step out of bound of that group okay you will be faced with consequence okay and you know when when, when you when you cannot question whatever anybody says to me it's it's it's, it's cut like that you know you cannot really uh express your own view as so oh, what is the way i see this you know you have to go with the belief system of this particular 
grew. Okay, so when you look at trans, 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 transgenderism and the and and the and, and the transgender uh, 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 group or activist, you see that they have this uh, tendency to control the narratives. Okay, they they have the this. Uh, uh, believe that you cannot say anything against them. That is why they tag you immediately. That you say something that is outside of what they consider uh, acceptable to them. So you'll be tagged. Okay. The way you may start with name calling, oh, it's transphobic. But if they see that you are consistent in your belief system and you're fighting, then they'll begin to look for a way to cancel you altogether. Okay. They will pick at your business. Okay, and they would do all kind of stuff just to, you know, to strike you down. Okay, now that is one explanation of it. But if you look at the Bible as well, it said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Okay, some of this that is happening today as spiritual backing. Okay, there are demonic, there, there are demonic and satanic activities. But it will be packaged as if well, it's, a, it's a social issue, it's a cultural issue, it's a cultural differences here and there. But we know that as Christian, okay, whatever we do, there is a spiritual element. In fact, that is the most, you know, the thing we are seeing in the physical is just the tip of the iceberg. The major thing, the spiritual part is the what we're not seeing, the unseen part of it. But people, that's why if we're going to, f- you know, uh, fight and make any appreciable difference in this issue that we're dealing with. It's a spiritual battle we need to, to fight. And the battle starts from home, okay? That, you know, we, we go on our knees, we pray, and we preach the gospel. That is the only way to confront this issue because it has the spiritual element, okay? And all these issues, they are the, the, the worst kind of spiritual, I mean, uh, demonic infestation that we could ever see that any human being can ever encounter. That is why we need, you know, the armor of God. We need to fight the good fight of faith. That's my belief. That's, you know, what I think uh, Christian churches should be doing, not just to think, oh, it's a social issue. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that there are so many denominations now, especially in the United States and to a certain extent in Canada here, they are now imbibing critical race theory as a teaching mechanism to understand the issue of race relation to me. You know, how much of Bible have we read? How much of, you know, or biblical principle have we applied? And now they are now using CRT, critical race theory, as a means to understanding what the race relation should be. To me, that's an abomination, but that is where we are right now because they think that it's just social issue, it's just a cultural issue, not knowing that it is almost 100% spiritual issue. And devil is happy with that. Satan wants to keep us in that mindset that, oh, well, it's not spiritual matter. Okay. So, Jones, are you, in the type of work that you do and with what you are seeing in Canada, are you afraid of being shut down or canceled? Or what are you afraid of? Oh, no. No, I'm not. I'm not in any, you know, uh, we've, we've not been given the spirit of fear. If we're going to do this work, okay, we need to be fearless. Okay, look at, look, look at the biblical history. Look at all the, uh, the, the, the forefathers in the faith, the apostles, you know, the, the, the original disciples, they became the apostles. And then even thereafter, you know, all along, uh, so many generations that have come and gone, there's nothing worthwhile that, you know, we can achieve without risking it all. Okay, so yeah, the, the tendency is there to be afraid, but by the grace of God, I've made up my mind that, you know, uh, would they take away my business? Would they shut it down? Of course they can. Okay, but the Bible says that fear, you know, him not. The person that can kill the body, okay? Mm. But the person that you should fear is God, who has the power to kill the body and at the same time cast that body into hell. So uh, my allegiance is to Christ. My allegiance is to uh, to the gospel, you know. And uh, whatever comes, we will see. And by the grace of God, I believe that we are we overcome as believers. Wow. Okay. So from there, we're gonna move on to the inspire emoji. That's not inspired emoji. That's holy. Here we go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's my inspired emoji. 
background. So, Jones, I want to move on to hope. So, when you think of the type of work that you're doing, yeah. you know, what would be the most hopeful idea you can think of for the future of Canadian children? My, my, my hope, <laughs> my hope is that the children, the Canadian children, okay, in large number, we come to the knowledge of Christ. Okay, but that is the only hope that we have as an individual, as families, even as a society. The only hope that any man could hold on to is the hope that Christ provides. Okay, that when you come to me, he said, you know, uh, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. So I hope that in the future, okay, and the future begins from now, that the Canadian children will be able to worship God in truth and in spirit, okay? They'll be able to worship God at home. They'll be able to worship God at school. Anywhere they go, they'll be free, and free indeed, through the grace that Christ provided at the cross of Calvary. That is my hope for parents as well, that they will come to understand that, you know, Christ had paid it all. All we need to do is to tap into that grace that Christ had provided through his death and his resurrection. Awesome. Okay, Jones. So now we move on to holy. What is the the most holy idea you can think of in the type of work that you're doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a big one. But here is here is what I know that if we come back to the beginning, okay, what God had made, in fact, there will be a restoration of everything eventually. On the final day, when God will judge, you know, the quick and the dead, He will judge everyone. I'm hoping that a family, I mean, family, will come back to. Uh, to to that place where God had put it in the first place, that is 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 a place where children are nurtured in the knowledge of God. Family becomes a place where godly world views are formed. Okay, it's a, a Christian. I mean, a home where fathers and mothers, you know, the the their preoccupation is to please God. I think that's one of our most holy calling to do the will of God. And I hope that, you know, defense for the family, we, we we try its best, whatever God will want us to achieve, that we are able to bring family, at least to a state that God originally put it, mm. a place of influence, a place of blessing for all. Love it. Okay. And finally, divine. So what would be the most divine idea you can think of in the type of work that you do? Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, uh, I've been talking about a lot recently about the divine purpose, okay? Divine purpose of God, okay? If you look at the, uh, the our Judeo-Christian Judeo history, you know, you look for one man, you know, Abraham, they called Abraham. Then we have Isaac, and eventually we have Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, okay? Then eventually Christ came, and here we are. God is still God's divine purpose that family be made whole again. It is his divine purpose, his divine plan that we make family great again if i may use that word okay <laughs> and and it is divine purpose that we build family back okay we build it back better and uh what's the last word there you know we build it back and better let me just say that okay you know? <laughs> so that is a divine will divine purpose and divine plan of god and you and i if we join our hands together we can actually achieve a lot for God in this area. Okay, so make family great again. Yes. 
the most divine idea in today's episode. Oh yeah, let that sit in. Let that sit in, my friends. Ah, sing with the angels. Love it. Okay, Jones. So tell us a little bit of how can people support the type of work that you're doing? You know, defenseforthefamily.com. What can they do to support it? Yes. So uh, we have uh, quite a, a few numbers of way. Number one, you know, we we need uh, finance uh, financial help to be able to get our word out there. You know, the opposition that we face, they are well funded. They are, you know, the uh, finance is not an issue to them. But uh, if you look at our project on the defenseforthefamily.com, we have a lot that is coming, but it, it requires the the finance uh, that that the. Uh, people of God, where many people can support us in that regard, then we want you uh, people to be our uh, social media ambassadors as well. You know, you can join us on Facebook, you can join us on Instagram, you know, we are on Gab, you know, so now that's one thing we could uh, you could do to help us. And if you go to our website, uh, www.defenseforthefamily.com, there's other things, I mean, other ways that you can be of help to us. You can pray for us and pray along with us as well. And more importantly, let's live a life of uh, a, a Christ-centered life that we share, that we make us to be light in this world that we are in right now. Jones! Onik Binde, mm -hmm. thank you for being on the show, my friend. I'll thank see you, you so much, on the next one. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. All right, my friends. As always, destroy the like button. Subscribe to our episodes everywhere you're listening to on Spotify, on iTunes. Follow us on Instagram at Christian Extian Podcast. We're also on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're everywhere. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Visit us at ChristianPodcast.com for amazing emoji merch and in-depth of our episodes. See you later. <laughs>